Good morning and good evening wherever you're at in the world. Welcome to another webinar in our 2021 series hosted by Intercon Engineering. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for joining us again and your continued support is very much appreciated. For our new viewers, Intercon is, our, is your power system integration solutions expert. Our main facility is located in East Peoria, Illinois, where we do all our designing, manufacturing, and testing of power systems up to three megawatts of power. Today, we have produced over 40,000 projects, not only domestically, but all around the world in 110 different countries throughout our 45 year history, uh, going on 46 this year in September. I'm your host, Sean Lott. I am the Director of Business Development. I am actually located in the Business Development Office in Huntsville, Alabama, and we just had our one-year anniversary there in, in that office in Huntsville. This is our eighth webinar. Uh, this, this is our second one for 2021, and we did six previous web webinars for 2020. If you missed any of the previous webinars, visit our YouTube page where you can see all of our webinars and other informative intercon videos highlighting our 45-year history. I will paste the link into the chat box so you can click it and view it at your, at your leisure at a later date. Before I introduce today's speaker, I just wanna just lay out some, uh, some ground rules. Feel free to ask questions during the presentation. The only thing you need to do to ask a question is to click the Q&A tab located at the bottom of the Zoom toolbar. Type in your question, I'll receive it, review it, and we'll get those answered. Our goal is to answer all of your questions after the presentation concludes. As a reminder, this session is being recorded for on-demand viewing on Facebook and on YouTube. So you can go there uh, within a couple of hours upon the ending of this video, you can see it. So if you miss anything, you can go back and watch it or you can share it with your, your counterparts in your office. Now I'd like to introduce today's presenter, McLean Wendt. He goes by Mac. Mac serves as Intercon Integrated Defense Solutions primary electrical engineer. He has experience on numerous commercial projects as, the, as a design engineer, applications engineer, and project manager. Without further ado, Mac, the floor is yours. Thanks, Sean. So first off, uh, just to kind of make sure that we're all on the same page, since there can be uh, various different uh, concepts of what uh, makes up a microgrid. A uh, microgrid is gonna be a, a site, a facility, or a campus that has its own distribution and uh, generation of electrical uh, energy. And, that it can operate on its own, supplying at least at the minimum its critical uh, loads in an island mode uh, where it's separated from any uh, grid. It may not, may be remote and may not even have any grid connected to it. So what becomes more interesting is looking at uh, the smart grid technologies and when you integrate that into a particular microgrid. And so when, with uh, controllers that are able to communicate uh, through communications and, uh, and process, uh, process all the, the data, you can more effectively use your microgrid uh, to better use your, um, your power and to um, uh, allow for, for the better use for your, your loads. So to do all this, uh, you've got an advanced uh, sensor, have increased uh, sensors throughout your microgrid monitoring, uh, monitoring specific nodes, uh, digital meters for, for, uh, for monitoring the flow of power, uh, relays for recovering your system from faults and detecting faults, uh, and also a good distribution system uh, for being able to reroute power around problems. Uh, and then finally, also integrating energy storage solutions, batteries, and supercapacitors uh, to be able to meet, uh, meet the, the need of your, your facility. Next uh, slide. Next slide. <clears throat> so, when you're setting up your microgrid, uh, 
you have to consider what characteristics of that microgrid uh, you want to enhance uh, and, and, and which ones are more valuable than others or how you can uh, make all of them uh, better. So uh, stability is the first issue is the quality of your power. If your frequency is not regulated uh, properly or if your magnitude of your voltage is uh, uh, varying, uh, then it could cause damage to sensitive loads. Uh, the reliability of your power. So you want to make sure your lights are on all the time. So the mean time in between uh, failures, you want to uh, increase uh, so that if whenever you do have a failure, uh, it's it's very rare. But in the event that you do have a failure, um, then you want your system to be resilient. You want it to be able to recover from that failure and power the loads back up uh, without damage uh, as soon as possible. Uh, and then finally, you want to um, use your resources to the max and extend your your uh, your functionality, your your um, uh, your your abilities, based on making your system as efficient as possible. So all those allow us to reduce our envir environmental impact uh, in the case where you uh, could potentially be a, a supplier of power, create a potential revenue source, uh, extend your operational reach. Uh, this is a bit more of a military concept as far as being able to um, have uh, be self-sufficient and being able to use uh, the things around you, uh, the environment around you, uh, so that you can extend your, uh, yourself as far away from your, your base so that you limit your logistics lines uh, that can be vulnerable to attack. Mobility. Some applications, some microgrids are not stationary. They actually can move around. So in that case, um, the system as a whole, you need to uh, uh, take and have that capability. Uh, remote locales. We've got equipment down in Antarctica. I don't think it gets much more remote than Antarctica. So if you are in a remote area, uh, then you need to be self-reliant. Uh, and then Ultimately, commercially, we want to minimize our operational costs. Uh, so whether that's due to downtime or uh, damage to equipment um, or just uh, better use of our resources, we want to reduce our operating costs. All right, next slide. So the Four or three different uh, segments of a microgrid uh, would be your sources, your generation of uh, power, uh, your distribution and controls. Uh, so how you actually manage uh, that the, the flow of power and your sources and coordinate things. Uh, this is where the smart part of the microgrid is in co the coordination of all the components working together uh, harmoniously. And then finally, uh, the loads. If you don't have the loads, then what's the point? Um, so um, really focused on what your loads, what you're trying to accomplish with your system uh, it is important in, um, in your design. Next slide. So we'll look at uh, the sources in a little bit more in depth. Uh, as I said before, really a key point of a microgrid is that it can run in island mode so that you are uh, self-sufficient um, and uh, do not need external power sources. Uh, so backup generators uh, or site generators are you know, the primary and traditional uh, means for this, uh, typically running off of uh, uh, non-renewables or fossil fuels. Uh, so those generators can be either running as a backup or primary, um, just depending on whether or not you actually have an external source or not. Uh, but how you actually operate them can either improve your resilience or your reliability. Uh, typically uh, one or, or, or both of those is what you're gonna be targeting. Uh, but in the case of a backup generator, if the generator comes online after a failure, so if you have, if you're connected to utility and your utility uh, fails, uh, your uh, generator is on standby waiting to 
to turn on. Well, your facility will have a power loss, um, but just until your generators come up online. Uh, so in that case, your system overall is resilient, that your downtime due to the failure is minimized. Uh, but then also you can um, run your generators in the background um, all the time, uh, supporting uh, the primary load. Uh, but in that case, then you need to maintain enough site generation to be able to take over uh, the load from the, uh, from the utility if it fails. Uh, in which case, if you have, you can have a seamless transition where the utility fails out and your facility continues humming along. In that case, you've increased your reliability of your, your system. Uh, but that does also cost more money to always be running your, uh, running your generator. So, um, so that has to be balanced. Uh, heat recovery. Uh, so there are some other advantages that you can uh, pull off of uh, having site generators. And if you have a combined heat or power and heat system, uh, then you can actually uh, use the heat from the generators to uh, heat the facilities, uh, recapture that heat and use it elsewhere in your facilities. Um, all right. Next uh, slide. So utility. Here in the developed world, we typically have very stable um, utility with a good power quality, stable voltage, stable frequency, uh, and very reliable. Hardly ever do we have uh, outages that are very long at all. Now, of course, two months ago, we also did see a, uh, a huge power outage, in particular down in uh, Texas, um, but also in, uh, in surrounding areas. Uh, where you did have uh, issues with the with the grid, and you had uh, customers that were out of power for up to four days, um, on average, uh, I believe I read uh, it was uh, seventy point five hours uh, of customers without power uh, that were affected. That's a that's a long time, uh, especially in our modern sense of uh, being able to turn the lights on. So that does show that the need for having your own uh, system, your own microgrid to be able to support your needs, uh, even if the, uh, uh, if the, the reliable utility fails. Um, utilities typically uh, are more cost effective, at least in running your own generators, uh, depending on what your uh, fuel supply is. All right, next uh, slide. So then renewables. So the renewables are um, definitely on a lot of people's uh, minds. Uh, we want to um, be able to take the sunlight, convert it to energy, the wind, turn it to uh, usable energy. Uh, we want to use what's around us uh, to suit our, our needs. Um, so integrating uh, renewable sources uh, into your system uh, can be a great way to reduce operating costs uh, to potentially be a generator of electricity to up to the, the grid and be able to sell it to external customers. Uh, the goal would be to reduce your environmental impact. Uh, there's definitely a um, goodwill in that. Um, and then also for military application, as I talked about extending your operational reach, uh, renewables can play a critical role in reducing uh, those logistics supply lines uh, that are uh, very much a target for, uh, for the enemy uh, and, and uh, uh, in, in any limiting that will uh, help the warfighter uh, uh, accomplish their mission uh, without taking undue risk. Uh, next uh, slide. So, um, so with uh, energy storage, uh, um, we can, uh, energy storage can allow us to do uh, various different things. Uh, with, uh, with energy storage, you can increase your reliability. So if you are storing your, the power uh, when uh, power is, uh, the supply is abundant, uh, then you can uh, re-release that where, when uh, demand is, uh, exceeds your other 
uh, sources. Um, uh, that actually helps your efficiency. Uh, so you can size your system to operate in a way that uh, um, is in a, a sweet spot as far as each component's uh, efficiency uh, for its uh, power output and the, uh, supporting the overall consumption of the, the load. If you are able to uh, use an energy storage system uh, to be able to power the load when the sources are not uh, not at their optimal. So if the, if the sun's not out, um, then you can uh, have some reserve energy to, um, to supply your load uh, while you're waiting for the, the sun to come back as you carry through those, those uh, uh, dips. Uh, it also can uh, increase your reliability at the, at the point of load, where if you do have either site generators um, renewables or utility, uh, if they do fail, um, uh, your, your batteries can, batteries or super capacitors can carry you through until um, those other sources come back online, um, which case at the point of load, uh, you've increased your reliability because there's been no interruption to the actual uh, performance. Uh, and then uh, another military application is uh, um, silent mode. Uh, some applications, uh, you may be concerned about your sound signature, uh, giving away your location. Uh, so in that regards, batteries uh, can uh, eliminate the noise of the diesel generators if they're sized appropriately to uh, uh, carry the loads for, uh, for, the, significant, for the, the duration of, uh, of the mission. Um, all right, next slide. All right, so when you combine all of these different types of sources, now your microgrid has a hybrid power source. And each one of these uh, sources has its own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so um, in, your, in your system, it needs to be able to uh, uh, account for all of the uh, uh, deficiencies of different uh, individual sources and uh, use the advantages of the other of the other sources to compensate. Uh, next slide. So to do that, uh, we go to the distribution and the control. Uh, so uh, you've got your generator controls, your uh, breaker control and paralleling load. All that has to be done uh, through communication so that all of your different controllers are communicating to your master controller uh, that's coordinating um, each component uh, to, to maximize it, its, uh, uh, its uh, potential. So in that you, you, need, you need data to feed to your controllers. So uh, sensing becomes very important. You need to have all of the proper nodes in your circuit uh, monitored. Uh, you need to have the right protective relays there to uh, protect both uh, sources and to protect uh, loads. Uh, it also, all of this data uh, and control uh, can also allow you to control the system remotely. Um, if uh, uh, if that, that's desirable, normally it is, it has to be weighed against uh, uh, some security. Uh, but you're not necessarily have to monitor your system while in the facilities, you could be monitoring it on the cloud. Um, so with all this control, all the sensing and data, um, then you can start building your system to really prioritize uh, sources uh, based on uh, maybe cost effectiveness. Uh, if, Maybe having one source, if it uh, is more expensive, um, uh, drop down its, uh, its uh, uh, contribution and rely more on another source that's more readily available or more, uh, more economical. And then also optimizing uh, the performance so that at the end you are achieving what your system is designed for. So then the bones of the system, the bones of the uh, microgrid would be the distribution system. And so the, it's with your switchgear, your, your, your breakers, your um, 
your bus, uh, how the topology of that is laid out is very important on your system uh, overall performance um, and the way that you transform the energy. So uh, whether you're, you're changing the magnitude from, um, from medium voltage down to 480 or to 120, or if you're changing from AC to DC, um, you have to be mindful of setting that up uh, so that it's in the most efficient uh, efficient manner. And then finally, you have to be able to manage your loads and through uh, your breakers and prioritization. Uh, so um, that brings us to the next slide. Which are your loads? So why do we care if we have power? It is really so that we can do something with it. So we can turn on the light, so we can uh, power the factory. So stepping off of the controls, uh, you really have to identify and characterize your, your loads uh, to know what you're targeting uh, and be able to isolate critical loads. So um, if you have critical loads that absolutely cannot ever lose power. So for instance, a hospital that has life supporting equipment on it, and you never want those to be out of power. So you can put on various different layers uh, there to make sure that those never lose power, uh, even if you have a failure on your, or even if you have multiple failures. So uh, you'd have your you know, normally powered off of your utility, you'd have those circuits powered by a backup generator, and then probably some sort of battery system, uh, a UPS on an uninterruptible um, supply so that those systems carry through any sort of fault um, for whatever duration it is, uh, to at least in time for you to be able to um, take other action. So doing that means that the way that you have your distribution laid out, you need to segregate those critical circuits uh, and be able to control them appropriately. Uh, so if you do not have the enough supply for all of your normal operations, uh, then you can go into a load shed uh, operation where you're dropping the non-critical um, uh, uh, circuits. So export, uh, if you are a net producer of electricity, uh, then you can export it up to external customers uh, or up to the grid. Uh, if you do that, then you'll um, be subject to uh, their own regulations uh, as to uh, as to how that will affect the, the, the grid as a whole. Um, but it, you need to be mindful when you're setting that up um, to see what that capability is. So AC and DC loads. So I touched on this a little bit um, in the distribution is being mindful of uh, the, uh, anytime you're converting energy from one form to another, either uh, different magnitudes or uh, from AC, uh, to DC or DC to AC, you have to be mindful. So uh, now that we have multiple sources, we've got photovoltaic cells, we've got batteries, those all produce and operate in the uh, with, uh, DC uh, electricity. And then you've got sources, traditional ones, uh, utility and uh, site generators uh, that are all AC. Well, increasingly, our loads are not always AC. Uh, oftentimes, many of them are DC loads. Um, we went into a lot of LED lights, uh, charging, uh, charging batteries. Uh, so if you're setting up a system from, from the get-go, if you lay out your topology so that you keep your DC sources and your DC loads on, uh, on a common bus or or segment of your microgrid and do the same thing with your AC sources and DC sources, their DC AC sources and AC loads, um, then you can couple those through a single bi-directional inverter to allow anytime you have an AC um, uh, supplying a DC load uh, that you just have a single, uh, single uh, loss of efficiency through uh, through that inverter or uh, likewise, if you have a DC 
uh, source providing uh, an a a AC load, you just have a single um, point of loss as opposed to having a DC source um, be inverted into uh, an AC distribution system and then at the point of use be then rectified into a DC signal. So the way you lay those out really affects your efficiency of your overall system. All right, next uh, slide. <clears throat> so when we take um, the hybrid sources that we have, uh, your smart uh, distribution and control um, and lay out your loads, uh, loads well, um, then you can take steps to reduce the risk of damage to equipments, reduce your frequency of downtime and the duration of the downtime. Uh, you can also do more with less and have a return, have a better return on your, uh, on your investment, be a good steward of everything that, that we're provided and also extend your capabilities uh, and not be limited by your, uh, either what's available to you. Uh, you can produce your own. So ultimately, uh, to me, the key advantage of having a, your own smart microgrid is to be self-reliant so that you have uh, multiple sources and a good distribution system that, um, that puts your destiny in your own hands. And next slide, which... All right, Matt, we really appreciate it. Uh, some great information concerning the benefits of microgrids. I just want to remind everybody that uh, the Q&A tab, don't be bashful. If you have any questions that you would like to ask, just click the tab and type in your question and I will review it and we'll get it answered. Uh, nobody will see your question, so only I know who asked the question, but no question is a dumb question. So any question that you may have, just feel free to, to, to type it in. If you're joining us on Facebook Live, just do a comment in the comment section there, and I will see it here on my phone, and I will get that question asked as well. So you've got two means, Zoom or, or Facebook Live. Uh, with that said, we do, have, we do have two questions, Matt, for you. Uh, the first question is, uh, is concerning the, the effect to the larger grid. So how does the increase of microgrids affect the larger grid? Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> so yeah. When with the increase of microgrids, you do have a more uh, distributed uh, um, power system, and uh, overall, that that can cause complications and also benefits. Um, my focus isn't normal isn't on uh, the the grid. At, as a whole uh, is definitely an interesting uh, concept, but there, there's definitely um, things that have to be mindful of as far as uh, creating stability to uh, the network. If you have uh, a lot of small sources as opposed to uh, large uh, generation, uh, you can impact the, uh, the stability of the grid as a whole. Um, and, but then you can also create some um, more reliability where if you do have um, uh, individual microgrids uh, being able to kick off and support themselves, that would reduce the burden to the, the overall grid. Uh, so uh, I think microgrids in general, uh, as they become uh, more commonplace uh, um, and will benefit the grid um, but uh, there's a lot of interesting things going on with uh, regulation and the coordination of that in a, a larger scale uh, to make sure that uh, uh, individual microgrids are not negatively impacting the overall grid. So it, that's not really my area of expertise, but it's definitely a very interesting thing to, uh, to, to look into. Okay, fair enough. 
Uh, the next question that deals with redundancy. So how can redundancy be built into the system? Okay, yeah, so uh, probably something I didn't mention that I, I kind of meant, meant to go over uh, is to, to increase uh, both reliability and resilience, uh, building in redundancy into your system is, is quite important. Uh, obviously, when you're dealing, when you have multiple uh, sources, you've got, uh, that means now you have redundant uh, sources now. Uh, for your generators, you may have more generators. You might have twice as many generators as you actually need just to, to have that redundancy. Um, it costs more money anytime that you put redundancy in. Um, but uh, sources, if you have multiple sources, you already have that built-in redundancy. Uh, only if each source uh, independently can carry the, the, the load, or at least the, the minimum, the critical loads of the facility. In your distribution, uh, I think one thing that I mentioned uh, was being able to reroute um, power. So depending on the topography of your, um, of your distribution, uh, there's various different topographies that can allow for redundant path of power. Uh, there are ring buses uh, that uh, allow, um, that allow you to direct power um, one way or another. So if you have a segment of your microgrid that's down for uh, maintenance or down due to a fault, uh, you can isolate that segment. But um, if you don't lay out your distribution um, properly, uh, you could make everything downline of that also offline. So you wanna make sure that there's uh, either a ring bus or, or some other means to um, uh, to reroute the power uh, with controls too, because uh, you've got smart controls. Uh, there are uh, PLCs and controllers that have uh, have redundancy built into them uh, for critical applications. Uh, so again, if all of your system is running off of a uh, single master controller. Well, if that microcontroller fails or that, that, that the PLC or whatever that, uh, that master controller is, if it fails, then your system's down. Um, so you have to have either, either manual means or uh, some uh, controllers have, uh, have redundancy built into them. So two processors running in parallel together uh, that uh, coordinate the operations. Okay. Uh, another question I have is the, um, it's, it's no secret that the, the, the U.S. military, especially, the, you know, the joint force is more focused on, on high intensity near peer type of, of conflict versus the asymmetric warfare that's been going on for the past uh, 15 to 20 years. So when you think about microgrids and you mentioned about extending the operational reach with the utilization, utilization of, of some of the sources, um, how, how would that, how would you be able to, when you think about microgrids, is that like a, a fixed, a fixed position or location, or is that can you can that be mobilized so it can go with you when you're doing like offensive maneuvers? Oh yeah, so I think earlier I did mention um, mobility um, of a system as possible. Actually, if you can go back to the site generator slide. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so uh, yeah, th this particular unit here is uh, a, a primary uh, power unit that we uh, produced for the military and uh and so it is definitely it's a mobile unit you can see it's a trailer and it powers a mobile radar group uh so that that radar group has its own distribution uh it has its uh, uh site it, these generators would be the site generators uh and provide primary power um, they, they also have a utility tie-in to uh uh, if it is available. Uh, so th this is an example of a, a military, military mobile uh, microgrid. 
Um, and then, um, yeah, so it definitely can be mobile um, and they may or may not have a tie into a, a, a shore power or a, um, a utility. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, that, that makes uh, that makes sense. Now, definitely assist with the uh, the speed and the tempo, especially when you're doing offensive operations. Um, yeah. One thing you don't want to do is 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 relax on that and, and have the the adversary gain advantage over you just by the fact that you are tethered to certain power sources and your operational region is constrained. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, go ahead. No, I you to say something. So I'm looking at the Q and A tab. I don't see any more questions, but if you have some, we have about uh, about 30 seconds to send us a note. And let me check Facebook Live real quick. Uh, don't see any questions there. And again, if you have a question on Facebook Live, just drop it in the comments section. Zoom, click the uh, click the Q and A tab. Yeah, actually, um, on the slides for the. Uh, for the controls and the and the load, that was actually a picture of one of our uh, or a couple of our lineups uh, that is for a combined power and, and heat um, plant too. So that that again is another one of those additional. Uh, if you do have a, a large network like that, you can also recover the the heat of your diesel uh, generators or, or I don't know whether that one's a diesel or if it's gas, but uh, there's other means that are not just electrical in nature as far as increasing your uh, efficiency and better utilization of your resources. Okay, thank you. All right, if there's no more questions, appreciate Mac for uh, taking the time to present uh, Microgrids to us and sharing his expertise in the, in the subject, on the subject. I just want all, all of you to be informed that intercon engineering happenings and future events is, is all over our social media platforms. So one way you can do it is you can go to the intercon uh, YouTube page. I just put the link in the chat box so you have it. Or you can go to our Facebook page as well. Just search for intercon engineering on Facebook. Make sure you like the page and subscribe to the page. And anytime we have a intercon announcement, you will get notification of it immediately because uh, when we do our webinars, I also put the events there and you'll get instant notification of the event and you'll be able to register and you'll get notification uh, via Zoom as well. Speaking of uh, our next event, our next free webinar is April 27th. And it's going to be at the same same time, ten o'clock uh, Central Daylight Time. So we'll have a we're we're hopeful to have a panel discussion focused on sustaining military power systems. So we are looking forward to having some military guests join us on a panel and discuss how do we sustain military power systems uh, to to effectively augment uh, the things that our military uh, soldiers and airmen uh, they do out there in the field. So look for your invitation in about a couple of weeks. And Mac and I certainly, certainly appreciate your attendance. You guys have a happy spring and have a great day.